From Eureka Park, I'm Michael Artsis on Be Terrific here in Las Vegas, Nevada at CES 2019. I've got Eric here. The company is Mycroft, and you guys have an AI that is a smart speaker and a little bit more. Tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. So we do make an entire software uh, voice assistant. We've got the hardware smart speaker. The thing that really sets us apart from competitors in big tech is that for consumer users, we keep them completely private. Uh, we don't store any recordings, any user data. Uh, we want people to know that they don't have to sacrifice data independence and privacy to have a great voice experience in their homes. So that's exactly what we set out to provide. So you've got a nice little screen, uh, speaker. Um, when is this available and how much does it cost? Sure, so the Mark II's uh, for 189, it's on pre-order right now on Indiegogo. And you know we're looking to ship at the end of Q1, but because we know people are going to remember uh, less the day it ships and more whether we mess it up or not. We're going to take our time. We're going to get the best product that we can make out there to our backers and our, our customers. Talk about some of the features and if it'll work with existing products like Hue light bulbs and stuff like that. Absolutely. So we definitely have integrations with things like Spotify, Pandora, Philips Hue, Wink Home Hub, um, various other ones like that, and we're adding new ones every day. Um, our open source community has provided over 300 skills. Um, they put in three skills for every one that we develop internally. So there's always a, a growing uh, you know, skill set for, for the device and it's really easy to make your own if you're so inclined. The sales pitch over something like Alexa, or, uh, Google Home, or Apple HomeKit is that this is private and your information is not going anywhere, it's all internal. That's right, so um, you know, there are things that it's just not feasible to do on a small device like this, like full on speech recognition. Um, we provide those services to our users. We don't store the recordings. Um, we do have a facility that allows people to opt in to, to send those back to us. That really just improves the, the technology. We're very explicit about how we're using that data, who has access to it and who doesn't. Um, we take about 15% of our community um, opts in for that and it's very helpful and that's enough to let the other 85% of people understand that you know, they're private, they're not being recorded, they're not being stored or sold. Talk about the screen, the quality of the screen and what it's really mainly used for. Absolutely, so the screen is, is a brand new thing with the Mark II for us. Um, it's gonna add some, some great visual interaction, um, a, an LCD touchscreen um, that lets you play and pause, do device setup. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves on, on other smart speakers, if I'm listening to a song, and I don't know what it is, I have to stop the song to ask what song it is. You know, real simple stuff like that that you maybe don't think about, but really add to the experience just in you know, making things easier um, and, and not interrupting the sound quality um, to have a, you know, a good experience. How is the voice recognition? It's great, so um, we have the option to use commercially available fast and, and accurate speech recognition. We're working closely with Mozilla on their deep speech project um, which is improving every single day. Um, a lot thanks to those opted in users like we mentioned. Um, we tag those recordings, we send them off to Mozilla, um, and they use those to build models that are specifically tailored to our voice scenario. How big is your user base? Uh, we've got just under 25,000 users right now. Um, that grows at a pretty good clip of a couple hundred people a day. Um, we're here at CES to get people excited, get out in the press, tell them that there is an alternative to Echo and Google Home. Uh, that they don't have to sacrifice on privacy. Um, so we're looking for plenty more people. What is uh, your uh, biggest uh, concern with privacy with these devices? Not yours, but the other devices. Right, we're, we're not here to say that anyone's being necessarily malicious, but it's really easy to have issues arise when there's just puddles of data out there that, that are you know, maybe unsecured or maybe you know, in some cases get accidentally sent to the wrong places. Um, it's definitely the case that having some of that data is improving the technology, but um, you got to understand where the line is, and um, you got to understand that people, you know, a lot of people aren't going to try that technology, so we want people to have fewer reasons not to come and try a voice. And how'd you guys start this company? So uh, our CEO started the company after seeing a uh, simple voice interaction in a makerspace in Kansas City. He was running a makerspace in Lawrence, Kansas, decided to try to build some of that. Couldn't really find any open technology to do it. So he started off with a little wrapper that tied in existing technologies together. Um, 
put on a Kickstarter. So the, the real start of the company was a Kickstarter. That was our initial funding. That was back in 2015 for our Mark I smart speaker. Um, between 2015 when the Kickstarter was and 2017 when we were able to deliver it, um, we open sourced more and more of the software. We had some great uh, natural language understanding uh, developers come in and build us some good engines um, that made the software work really great. Um, as we started going to accelerators, um, doing an angel round, uh, it opened us up to the, the corporate side where companies started realizing you know, they were looking at Amazon, they were looking at Google, they were seeing the future of voice and they started to come to us and say, hey, we want an independent, a private option that we can brand, we can customize, we can deploy ourselves. Um, that helped a lot more, the venture capital raise. Um, right now we're doing um, crowdfunding on the Mark II and a little bit of equity crowdfunding to let that whole open source community take a deeper stake in the company. Great, congratulations. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, so you so much for your time. It's Mycroft, he's Eric. I'm Michael, you're the Terrifics. Until next time, thanks so much for watching. Check out more on BeTerrific.com. And you know what? Be terrific.